to the May meeting of the East Chester Board of Fire Commissioners. We're holding an early meeting uh, today because of our schedule conflicts. So this is a 10 o'clock in the morning meeting. And uh, can we have a pledge of allegiance to the flag? Sure. Pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I look for a motion to open the meeting. Make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 I would just like to say before we start, when we close this meeting, let's close it in honor of Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day uh, month, and uh, it's coming up within another, I think, week or week and a half. Okay. And all our fallen comrades. Okay. Now, um, First copies on the agenda, which I have typed up. Okay. Uh, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to start the meeting uh, with a presentation from an, an arc engineer we've hired to review the, to do the work for the Tuckahoe project, and Peter Ingledon will start that. Uh, Presentation. Uh, okay. Right in. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, just uh, in a minute, we'll we'll hear from Anthony Monaco. He's the lead engineer on this project. Uh, but uh, as we uh, have mentioned in the last meeting, uh, the bid opening for this project was uh, Monday, May 11th at 10 o'clock. We had nine firms that uh, requested and received bid packages. Uh, as of mid-April uh, of the uh, nine, all had uh, indicated an intention to bid. Uh, in the end, on uh, the 11th, we only had uh, one bidder. Uh, the, uh, we did have uh, one bidder at the deadline. One bidder actually came in shortly after the deadline, and that bid was returned unopened. Uh, the, uh, the one bidder was uh, Paladino Concrete Creations. Uh, they are located in Mount Vernon, New York. Uh, the uh, principal of the firm is uh, an East Chester resident. Uh, that bid was for $172,647, uh, which is in our estimated range for the project. Uh, Palladino has been in business over 10 years. Uh, they've done a fair amount of municipal work. Uh, they've done work for the town of East Chester. Uh, we can discuss after the engineer speaks, but we've checked references uh, on, uh, on Palladino. Uh, we were given three pages of references. We've called multiple people, uh, and we have inspected some of the work that he's done. Uh, and uh, fortunately, uh, he, he was the only bidder, but uh, we believe uh, preliminarily that uh, they are qualified uh, to do this work. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tony. Yes. Uh, my name is Tony Monaco. I'm uh, AMM Engineering. I uh, got the list of uh, references from uh, Palladino Concrete, and I went through a number of them, and everybody indicated uh, uh, that they would reuse them again. The city of New Rochelle, uh, city of White Plains, city of Yonkers, the village of Bosony. They were all satisfied with his work. They said he could more than uh, perform on time. If there was any little dispute or conflict, he said he went back immediately, corrected whatever needed that they wanted corrected, and it was done, no questions asked. They said if any emergency work they would have, they would instantaneously use him without a second thought, and everybody had a good review for him. So based on what I talked and what I looked at, the um, information I could pull on the company, I have no problem recommending them to be accepted. Right, and the, the issue, the only real issue we had uh, was the fact we only had one and we have it now. We should make it clear. We advertised this twice in the in the paper. We put it out for bid. Uh, we did our formal due diligence, sending out as much as we could send out to get people interested. We had interest from approximately 11 people who picked up packages, and we went back and forth with a lot of. I think it was 11, right? No, uh, there were nine. Nine, 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 nine firms. Okay, so. there were nine but, firms that were communicating with us on this that we thought we would get a, a better outcome as far as number of bids. But the pricing 
that he came back with is is in the tolerance level of what we lower than or, or close to what we thought it was supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, just uh, a couple of things I would add. I mean, you know, clearly we were disappointed in the number of bidders, uh, but I would say that, it, as you mentioned a minute ago, uh, we posted this legal notice twice. It's only required once. We followed up with all bidders, made sure that they received, you know, uh, the, the proper information, all addendums. We checked in on a regular basis. The chief con assistant chief uh, handled that. And quite frankly, you know, up until a couple of weeks before bid time, all nine of these guys were indicating that they were going to bid. Uh, you know, as far as the fallout, we had one, you know, uh, firm that showed up, like I said, a couple of minutes late. And by law, we couldn't accept the bid. Of the other seven firms, two told us that there were substantially larger jobs that they had bid on and won, and just basically didn't have the, the resources to commit to this project. And then I think also, despite the fact that it was uh, right in the bid packet and, you know, uh, everyone should have been aware of it, uh, the bid bond uh, for this project, uh, some of these firms perhaps weren't bonded, and they realized as it came down to crunch time that, you know, this was, you know, uh, prohibitively expensive to go out and get bonding to do this project. And okay. They carry it on around. Usually, what happens is they have a finite bond amount, and if they already have too many contracts out, they can't bid on more contracts. Um, but I, one thing, I mean, Anthony, I mean, you feel it's a competitive price. I thought it was a competitive price. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, just preliminary. My first thought is a little lower than where my price. Will, I mean. I would have preferred a little closer to mine, but that's just my own dealing from years with the, when I was with the city of New York. That contractors that were substantially, because we're not talking about a huge price for the no. even what I had uh, estimated. Right. I would have preferred a little closer, but it's more than fine, and his credentials are well within reason, so there should be no problem. Okay, so we should just do a quick, very narrow recap of what we plan to do to this firehouse, just because... We are familiar, but the public may not be familiar. Just so for Tucker Hall residents, they know what we're going to be doing. Uh, sure. The uh, I mean, basically, the scope of the project is to replace the entire ramp. So basically, uh, an area that extends from, uh, I believe it's uh, six to eight feet to the left of the front of the building, wrapping all the way around uh, the corner, uh, probably going far back as. Uh, I would say uh, 30 to, to 40 feet. Uh, we're putting in new curbing. It's going to be reinforced uh, uh, concrete ramp coming down to the roadway. Uh, we are also repairing sections of the floor that were pulverized by uh, inside the, the, the in, inside the uh, in the house by the trucks. They'll be saw cut, dug out, uh, reinforced new concrete, and then there'll be a covering put on the floor when we're done. Okay, that's essentially it. Yes. All right. Is there, shall we, should we, um, we can might as well do this now. Do you want to do this resolution now to sure. award the contract? Yeah. Okay. And we have two resolutions to do with this contract. Um, one is to award, and then the second is a permissive resolution to move monies. Which, so, um, I'll read the resolution and uh, you can, um, after competitive bidding, the public reading of the bids, a review of the bids and due diligence by the fire district. Um, I move to award the contract, contract one, firehouse construction, floor rehabilitation, and sidewalk and curbing project to the lowest reasonable bidder, Paladino Contracting Creations Corp., in the amount not to exceed $172,647.50. So, Commissioner Ingledon offers the motion to accept the resolution as seconded by, who wants to second it? I'll second it. Seconded by Jerry Palatano, and I will poll the board. Okay, Commissioner Laurie. Could I just say something before sure. I get my vote? Yes, we should have discussion. Okay. Right. First of all, I tip my hat to Peter. He worked hard and diligently on this, and I commend you, Peter. Uh, if you continue that work, I'm sure we're going to get all our fire out and repay it on it. My only objection to this is that we're not doing the whole floor. That's my only objection, and I know uh, Mr. Maldasari said that we had some extra money in there, and I can't understand why we can't do that. My only opinion, maybe I could ask you as an engineer, when they're drilling this side of the floor, will that be loosening the other side where the engine parks? And then if it does happen that way, 
when they have to repair that other side, will it damage the new side that's done? Well, um, what I, I called for is to have the saw, uh, have the uh, slab saw cut right. to minimize any damage beyond the saw cut. Uh, everything is to use small equipment, and not to use heavy, heavy equipment in there, but to minimize any uh, damage that could be. Uh, once the new slab is poured, it will be separate from the other one, and there'll be less damage if you have to remove the other stuff on, down to the new one. But to say that there'll be absolutely no damage, probably not, but I don't know for 100% sure. But the way it's called for is to be saw cut, removed by hand, and the whole bit, so it should minimize anything. So like I say, the after, the after the new side is done, I don't want to say in a couple of months we're going to start seeing the other side cracking, you know. That's what I'm, I'm a little nervous because the other side, don't forget, the other side, that's original concrete from when that firehouse was built back in 29, was it, Mike, or 28, somewhere around that shit. You know, yeah. just, there's a ladder truck on the side that, you know, uh, is currently parked where we have the problems. Yeah. The other side, I believe, is a spare engine. Is that right. correct, Mike? Right now, that engine yeah. is considered so, spare. Right. The ladder so truck. There, is, there is a weight difference between a ladder truck no, I understand that because years ago when we had engine 28 in service, we refurbished it and we even put a bigger tank in there and that didn't crack the floor. It's just that those rigs weren't made for that floor at that time. But I just wanted this to be clear, Commissioner went this so but I know that floor has to be repaired and I know it has to be get done and I know in the future we're going to do the other side. But I definitely will give you my vote of confidence and say yes to this this project. Okay. And as far as how much monies we have available, we do have money in a reserve fund to pay that we're going to move out to pay for this, but that reserve fund also has to support apparatus that we right. have Right, I purchase. understand that, I'm and, aware. And apparatus these days close to three quarters of a million dollars for a pumper. No, I know. And so that would delete, wipe out the apparatus fund okay. for one pumper. So, um, all right, so I'll pull the board. Commissioner Lurie? Aye. Yes. Commissioner Bake is not here. Commissioner Lincoln Dunn? Aye. Commissioner Alpanatano? Aye. And I'll say aye. Motion carried. Okay, now we have to do a permissive referendum. And, th and thank you. Uh, we have to do a permissive referendum to move the capitals uh, from the reserve fund to if we spend the money. So here is the, and was anybody have discussion on this or anybody? We've done this in the past. We're familiar? Okay. No, we're just moving it from the House and up into Capital. the House and Humber. Yeah. Right. Whereas, a capital reserve fund for capital improvements for the for the far, town fire district of the town of East Chester was properly created by resolution, whereas the fire district will be properly sought competitive bids on the Tuckahoe project, which were opened and read aloud and awarded as being made to the lowest reasonable bidder, whereas the reserve fund has sufficient funds to fund the project. Now Therefore, the Board of Fire Commissioners of the, fire of the East Chester Fire District, duly converted and con con convened in regular session, does hereby resolve the following. Resolved that $172,000, what's the other exact amount? $647.50. $647.50 of monies now on deposit in the Capital Reserve Fund for capital improvements for the town fire district of the town of East Chester, New York, be the same hereby is appropriated for the Tuckahoe project, and the chairman is hereby authorized and empowered and directed to make such payments. Resolved that this resolution is subject to permissive random random, and that the authority is given for proper notice to be given. Um, so now we have to, after what we will do is, by this resolution, we will put an ad in a paper saying we're doing this, that we're required to do this. It's not a mandatory vote, it's just we have to give mandatory notice. Notice is hereby Close given that the East Chester Fire District, West Chester County, on a regular meeting held on the fifth day of May 2015, duly adopted subject to a permissive referendum, a resolution, and an abstract of which is the following. Pursuant to section six dash G of New York State General Municipal Law, a resolution expending 172,642, was it? Yes, 172,647,50. 647,50 of the capital A reserve fund, of a capital reserve fund, 
for capital improvements for the town fire district of the town of Eastchester for the purpose of Tuckahoe Project. This resolution shall be subject to permissive rental measure as permitted by law. So I will make that resolution. Does somebody want to second it that we do the permissive re resolution? I'll second. Inkledon, I'll call the board. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. And I'll say aye. So we'll, pa we'll pass the permissive resolution, and John Molnari has to put that in the local paper that we are doing a permissive resolution. And that is pretty much it for the Tuckahoe project. And that brought in. Um, and we got dates when they started? It was, uh, the, the timeline was, was part of the bid package, but we'll confirm with, uh, you know, there's going to be a little bit of leeway yeah, because no, we I want understand. to make sure they have right. all the materials okay. in their possession before they start so as to minimize the, the time that we're out of the firehouse. Yeah, a certain time so, after you sign the contract. Both parties have to sign the contract. Within two weeks of the work, right. which we've done that. Is, so we'll, uh, the sort of lead time, maybe 30 days that the project should start. July was our target, uh, early July was our target start date, early August our target finish. So, uh, you know. And the same thing, a little right. we'll leeway by finishing time too, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll nail all that down and hopefully right. by our next meeting we'll give, you know, much, much more information on exactly, you know, when we're going to start. Right. Well, as we get closer, we'll have to coordinate the movement of the truck and the two. The I was just going to say that. Yep. This was one of the reasons, right. you know, some may say, well, winter time to get a better price. We need to coordinate it because there's nowhere else to put 16 inside a firehouse. Is it over Brownsville? Uh, to me, the best would be to locate them down in Brownsville. Uh, it's, it's fairly close to their, you know, it is their first new area. And we can arrange for both Engine 29 and let a 16 personnel to fit. There's no problem there. For the dormitory, and no it'll be, yeah, yeah, we'll just have to add okay. a bunk. Um, okay. that, that's not an issue. But this way, because we can keep it outside in the same time. It's not okay. an issue. We, we, There's no issue with cold weather. We, we need to seal. Um, did they make appropriations to seal everything to the upstairs? All their sawing and stuff? Uh, I saw it across my mind that we should. I'm not sure if it was in the. Uh, I don't remember if it was the, in uh, the dormitory area. The, the well, even the, the compressor. Well, the compressor's on the apparatus floor. I know it would have to be covered before they saw. It. Yeah. No, we can. We can. We, 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 we yeah, we'll discussed we'll, we'll, all that. We'll make sure. Yeah. That well, what I'm saying is, we just got to decide who's responsible for it. I don't want to get into an issue afterwards where people are complaining about dust. I want to well, address well, the time my whether, mind, like I said, whether the contractor is responsible for it or we're going to have our maintenance folks do it. We're going to decide up front. I'm, I'm sure, I would think we could probably still, as far as I know, there should be no need for them to <coughs> access upstairs. The day room, you know, there is a bathroom in the back that they'll have access to if they need be. There's water outside. No, we're just going to have to and we got that desk there, to too. We got, all, we, got, we got all the desk equipment. Well, we got that, the radio. That's going to be tough. The radios, if we're going to have to, I don't know if we can really move things. If we can just sort of well, like they got to be bagged or something. Yeah, well, yeah, let's not just, just let it lie, there, lie uh, if, there. If if the house, yeah. honestly, if we're not there, uh, it could be simple enough to disconnect the equipment and remove it. Yeah, that's what we should do. That's what I would do. Because there's not, we won't be working. I see no, I don't see us working out of that fire. The amount of work that's wrong. being done, the vast majority can be done outside with the doors closed. The, and that's yeah, what we'll do. There will be saw cutting, which is going to uh, kick up dust. Right. But I think as we get closer, we'll make sure that we've completely, you know, prepared for that. And, and every, all we were in last second. Okay. Well, the, yeah, the, the well, assistant chief has assured me that he's going to be there on a regular basis and has already brought to, to light, you know, all right. some of your concerns. So I think, I, I think we're going to be fine there. All right. This okay. is not as invasive inside the house as... as the no, no, well, it's not. We also have some lead time here. Yeah, this so is like certain yeah. equipment that's stored down there. We can relocate. Okay, we've got a lot of... Uh, the radios will take you out. Thanks a lot. If you want to hang, you can if you don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a million yeah. things to do. Right. Thank you very much, yeah. gentlemen. All right, so thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Very good. I have a problem with that name. Anthony, right? Yeah. Thank you. Hey, better not forget. Remember, June 13th, the St. Anthony's Day. Did you see my license plate? No, it's only 13. Oh, okay. Everybody <laughs> wants to know why. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the Italian day. I says, come on. Oh, well, that is. <laughs> Take care, gentlemen. Okay. And have a Thanks. happy Memorial Day. Thank we, you. Um, yeah. We should probably have a quick uh, adjourn to executive session to ask Paul a couple questions.
and then come back out and do our other business. Um, because there do is we a need to? Or do yeah, you just do want to just do our regular sessions? business now and then if you want to make it executive can session. Can the agenda, you mean? No, we can do that. We can, the agenda is May. Um, we have a couple questions to ask him, particularly about Civil Service Law Section okay. 73 resolution. Okay. Uh, so it will be a fairly short, and I'm, I'm talking like a five or ten minute executive session, and then we'll just go right through this agenda very quickly. Okay. I, I think I think that's what we should do. Okay. Does anybody problem. have a problem with that? Okay, so what time is it right now? We'll be out of here by 3 o'clock. 10.23. Okay, so 10.23, uh, I can motion to go into executive session? Aye. Oh, no, Jared, uh, Mr. Lurie's making that motion. Second. Second, Mr. Inkledon. Any session? Okay. Um, Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You can just or I will be back in a, after our executive session. session. 11:27. Back in public session. Okay. Can I? We're back in public session right now. After leaving executive session, can I have a motion to open the public session again? So moved. Mr. Lorry and a second. Second. Nope. Mr. Napolitano. Aye. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So now at 11:27, we're back in public session. Um, okay. So we have a host of agenda items, mostly resolutions to go through regarding um, just typical fire department business. The first order of business is we have a, um, Mike, I'm going to do your chief's report last, if that's okay with you? Or do you want yeah, to do that? just a brief update, you know, April runs were a total of 269, uh, it's actually down a little bit. Um, I know one thing, everybody's hearing a lot of uh, news stories about mutual aid. We, we provided mutual aid on three occasions, one each to Greenville, Mount Vernon, and Yonkers. So okay. uh, we have not been experiencing any, any abuse. Normal. It is something that we will keep an eye on, just in case. But because of the news stories, uh, we have not been experiencing any issues with mutual aid, back. normal transactions. Yeah. Otherwise, it's uh, you know, pretty much business as usual. Okay, um, so the, the next um, issue I have to deal with today is the, the New York State passed a law regarding tax freeze, and what happens there is they're looking for municipal governments, school districts, towns, villages, and fire districts to find a way of doing share, shared services to cut their budget by 1% over each year for the next three years. Um, we, as a fire district, have done extremely uh, a lot of shared services in the past few, past 10 years or so. Our dispatch is controlled by 60 Control. Uh, that means all our, our apparatus is response to 60 Control, um, telling them where to go and, and organizing all our runs. Um, when you call 911, you get 60 control, or your local police department. You don't do not get the fire district. <clears throat> so 911 goes to local police. Yeah, 911. If you call from your house, goes to local to police. If you call from a landline, if you call from your cell phone, more than likely it goes to the state police. Right. Uh, that's why you should always call from a landline if you have one available. If it's close enough than a cell phone, choose the landline. Um, so, but most of our a lot of what we do right now, from fuel purchases to uh, just electricity we purchase, everything is done on a consortium or a shared service relationship. Even we're part of two villages in a town, from its very nature is a shared service, as three municipalities got together to form the fire district years and years ago. So we are going to write to New York State and explain how much money we save by doing these shared services that we're already doing, and we're not sure besides maybe um, doing one or two items in-house, maybe a mechanic or something like that, um, where we could share a municipality. We're not sure where we could have real savings that, to the size the state would want us to do by increasing our shared services that we haven't already done. So I would ask for this resolution. By this resolution of the Board of Fire, the Board authorizes Chairman Winter to work with legal counsel and any, to take any and all action necessary for the fire district to be eligible for the property tax freeze. In essence, what we're going to do is write a letter to New York State saying, this is why we believe we're already compliant. Uh, so if I would look for a motion that I can work with counsel 
to respond back to New York State's request to explain our shared services position. So moved. Okay, so Mr. Lawyer will make that motion and seconded by someone? A second. Seconded by Peter. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so I'll be working with counsel to send a letter to New York State responding to the shared okay. services. Um, next thing we have, we would like to set a date in the fall to have, um, we have a number of firemen uh, who have uh, <coughs> performed exceptionally over the last years in, in emergency situations and saved lives and property. We would like to honor those members who've, um, who've acted extraordinarily. And so we would look for a, um, a date in September or October to have an award ceremony um, at our monthly meeting where we can honor those members who have um, showed extreme professionalism and bravery in the line of duty and sometimes off duty. We had two members save a young child in a swimming pool accident a few years ago while off duty. And we think we should be giving them, a, because of their training they received here, um, we think we should be honoring those members by giving them appropriate uh, rec uh, accommodations or recommendation, uh, accommodations. So the membership has formalized a uh, presentation to give. And so we're looking for a committee of career staff to get together and come back to the board through the chief of the department with recommendations of who, is, who should be honored in the, on that ceremony. So it'll probably be September 10th, I think is the date, or October 8th, uh, the ch where the board is just asking the chief to, to solidify a date and the membership should uh, get together a committee and basically have a four month, five month lead time to get this done and we're hoping that it'll get done. There's, are those our regular uh, meeting nights? The 10th yes, and 8th? yes. So it will be our regular meeting nights on September 10th or, or Thursday the 8th. So uh, Mike, if you can put that together with the membership. I know there's been a few members who have come forward who want to be on this committee. If, and well, already, you don't need the board's I delegated, you just form it. I had already delegated to a captain and then this lieutenant that work in reviewing what we have from the past. And basically I'm just about ready to sit down with the lieutenant, review them. Basically I'd give the blessing and then I would present to the board for approval. You know, that I would recommend these people for these awards. And then the board would uh, say yes. That, that would con also consider... Um, a fireman who retired and didn't get anything. Also. Oh yes, yes. Any okay. member who, any member, whether active or not active, in the last few years. Okay. Well, obviously, we had retired in the last couple of right. years, but we want to look back a few years because yes. we know we haven't done this in a few years, yeah. and and there's been some life-saving events. We know of a number of people who've been brought back to life on EMS calls based on the actions of the membership. We, we think we they also, should get. We also had a car go in the water, and one of our firemen jumped in. And Rescued the lady also. Right, right. So there's those. So that's what we're looking to do. Um, all right. The next thing we have is uh, our front office. We have a um, we have a title there that Westchester County uh, does not use anymore, which was intermediate typist for a part time position. Uh, and so the county is asking us to clarify that position and to come to them with a, a, a title they think would be more appropriate. Uh, the board, after consideration with council, uh, we we have a slot called Secretary to the Board of Fire Commissioners. Basically, that would be a job assisting the Board of Fire Commissioners in their um, normal processing of papers and letters and preparing for meetings, which is perfectly suited for this position. So. Um, I would like to make a motion to appoint Mary Lou Falcone to the position of Secretary of the Board of Fire Commissioners starting on May 14th, 2015 at the same annual rate she is now at $28.56 an hour, not to exceed 35 hours a week um, without benefits, with or without benefits, depending on, depending on the approval of the civil, Westchester County Civil Service. And we're doing this because uh, thirty-five hours per day, not to exceed thirty-five hours per week, 
And we're not, we're doing that because she's currently working 17 hours a week. She will currently work 17 hours a week, but we're leaving it open because we want to see how Westchester County Civil Service will respond to it. Um, and that's why we need the approval of Westchester County Civil Service to do this. They seem to be pushing back a little bit on um, this intermediate typist position, so we're, 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 we have to negotiate with them what the amount of hours and this position can be. So we have a need for more than 17 hours, but we want to make sure that it's appropriate for the Westchester County Civil Service to do that. So that's why it's worded the way it is. Okay. So moved. Uh, Mr. Lorry will make the, I make the motion. Mr. Lorry seconded it. I'll pull the board. Aye. Mr. Baker says, uh, Mr. Ingledon says aye. I'll say aye. Mr. McAltano, aye. aye. And aye. aye. Okay, so that's, we'll move that. 1137. 1137. And we'll continue to work with Westchester County to see if we can get this position resolved. <coughs> um, we currently have a fire district doctor, Dr. Reddy who performs um, the, all the physicals and monitors the, uh, members when they call in sick. Dr. Reddy uh, has been with us for two years. He is looking for an increase of $500 a month. Um, the board is inclined to do that. So I would offer a motion to increase Dr. Reddy's monthly stipend to, three, to a total of $3,000 per month, effective um, it could probably be effective uh, his next month with June 1. Right. Effective June 1, um, 2015. Any discussion? No. So, second? I'll second it. Jerry Napolitano. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have a number of generators in the fire department. We've added five generators in the last few years, in the last five years. To each of the firehouses have up to date 60K and 50K generators. So uh, it's one of the big improvements we made at all the houses. And it was quite expensive to make these improvements. Um, they generally cost about $50,000 a generator, and we have five of them now. Um, it's come, come time to enter a service contract for somebody to do an annual maintenance on those generators. We went out for public bid, not public bid, excuse me. The Quote. assistant chief went and got quotes from three different vendors. The three different vendors, Power Performance Industries, came in at $2,565 annually for the five. Gentech came in at $3,710. And Atlantic Power came in with a slightly modified twice a year, $5,975. I think we should award it to the company that came in at $2,565 for the five generators. So I would look the board, I would ask the board to authorize the chairman or the, or the chief to execute an annual service agreement with Power Performance Industries of Yonkers, New York in the amount of $2,565 plus charges per the service agreement. And I would make that motion looking for a second. Second. Mr. England, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that's, that's that. Okay. We have another resolution. We have a firefighter who has been out of work, hasn't been able to come to work since last July. Um, what happens with the fire service if you're out for a, work for a, over a year, a year and a day, the fire district can terminate that employee. The fire district can only do so with a call to Section 73 uh, provision. Uh, council has advised us to offer this resolution. I will read the resolution. Any discussion? Any members are okay? So um, the subject is the employee termination accordance to Section Civil Service Section Civil Service Law Section 73. Whereas an employee of the Town of East Chester Fire District, identified as badge number 125, with the date of hire April 2nd, 1988, has been disabled by a reason of disability other than a disability resulting from occupational injury or disease as defined in the workman's compensation law, and that he was unable to perform his duties by reason of, of that disability for one year or more 
as of July 25th, 2015. I'm going to say that again, July 25th, 2015. Resolved, based upon medical evidence, including phys treating physician's opinion, the employee is physically and mentally unfit to perform his duties. Resolved, the Town of Eastchester Fire District Board of Commissioners hereby finds that the employee is not able to perform his or her duties due to his current physical and mental condition and that he has not, not been able to do so for, for a period of more than one year as of July 25th, 2015. We're saying that if he does not come to work by July 25th, 2015. Resolved that the East Chester that the Town of East Chester Board of Fire Commissioners hereby finds the employee physically and mentally mental condition is, is a disability other than a disability resulting from an occupational injury or disease as defined by workman's compensation law. Resolved that according with civil service law, the Board of Fire Commissioners hereby terminates the employee for those reasons stated here in accordance with civil service law section 73. Resolved, the board, of, the board authorizes the search of the application, and the, the board authorizes the search for an application to fill his position for the position of permanent appointment. Resolved, the board authorizes chief and or its attorneys at Coughlin and Gerhardt to provide such notice to the employee of his termination and shall also inform the employee of his rights under the provisions a copy under this procedure and provide a copy of the political section of civil service law. This resolution is in effect as of May 14th, 2015. So I will make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. And just so I can say, this is the board is taking a procedural process that if the employee does not come back to work by July, the law, the, within that time frame, the law firm and the chief can take appropriate action. So this is a procedural process. So, Commissioner Lurie? Aye. Commissioner Inglenon? Aye. Commissioner Del Pantano? Aye. And I'll say aye. Motion carries. 11 4 11 4 yeah. Okay. So now, let me go see if I have a motion for minutes. Um, I'll make a motion to accept Well, we, the, the, we've, we have minutes from April 23rd, monthly meeting. They were circulated to the board. Um, Mr. Palatano has made a motion to accept the minutes that were circulated. I'll second. Mr. Inglodon is second. <coughs> and all in favor? Aye. 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 So that's the April 23rd minutes, which are available online to anybody who wants them. Well, our meetings, I would always say, are available on um, YouTube. YouTube, or just go type in East Chester FD. Dot, it's just East Chester FD on YouTube, and you'll find them. So we did the professional referendum. We did the um, appointment. We did the generators. We did the doctor. We did the gym. Is there anything else I'm missing, gentlemen? No, we awarded the contract. Oh, we have one more thing we need to do. We have a project in Chester Heights. Um, which I have somewhere here. The, 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 the proposal from uh, FSI. I thought I had my copy. You want to speak to this? You want me to do it? I'll give you the color that you can go on. I need a top page. This is for you, it's not for size. I have theirs. There was one, I'm looking for a copy of a proposal. The Chester Heights Firehouse, um, we've had a couple architectural firms review the firehouse and come up with proposals. Commissioner Inglodon has been involved in this project. We received a proposal from a company called FSI Architecture uh, to do a physical conditions report on the building. Um, the, the building is in dire need of condition, and I'll let Mr. Inglenon explain what we have there. Sure. Uh, this would be, you know, 
part one of kind of uh, a, a master plan on, on how we're going to go about attacking the, the problems at the house. But basically, uh, we received two proposals uh, from uh, two highly qualified firms, uh, FSI, Cardinal was the other. And basically, uh, the, the proposals are very similar, uh, both in the scope of work uh, and in the cost uh, of, of performing them. And uh, what they do is they'll go through and they'll evaluate everything in those buildings, from roof systems, exterior building elements, the structural systems, interior finishes, uh, mechanical, HVAC, electric, plumbing systems, fire and life safety, life safety systems, and accessibility and compliance. Uh, and they'll, like I said, evaluate all those systems, come back, tell us uh, what needs uh, repair replacement, and then the uh, proposals also include a master plan, uh, you know, basically how those repair replacements should be attacked, uh, what the replacements should be. Uh, that would be phase one. At that point, you know, the uh, board will kind of review the proposals and decide how they want to proceed, uh, assuming we want to move forward with uh, a project and, and perform the renovations. At that point, we would engage uh, one of these firms, or potentially even a different firm, to go ahead and put together uh, engineering specs drawings to, to perform the work. Uh, so that's that's what's involved. As I said, both of these firms are highly qualified. They do a lot of this type of work. They've done it before on firehouses. Uh, FSI, uh, in particular, one of the principals of that firm, even though they're headquartered in New York City, is an East Chester resident. Uh, is familiar with the area, and uh, you know uh, we would ultimately like to choose between you know these two proposals, uh, subject to approval by council, uh, and move forward with it. Okay. So you want to recommend one? Do you want to move forward tonight? Uh, I think that uh, yeah, I I would recommend that we accept FSI's proposal. Okay. Now, one of the conditions FSI the 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 proposal we've received here needs to be negotiated by uh, council because what happens with engineering um, reports is that it's in, the, the devil's in the detail on the proposal. And so what we'd like to do is have um, you have to verify who owns the work product. The work right. Product. We have to ver ver exactly. We have to verify that the fire district will have control of the product when the at any point in time there's a. Um, we separate ourselves from the architect or the engineering firm, so um, which is one of those key provisions. So, I would uh, I would offer a motion that we accept FSI's proposal, subject to council negotiating a successful control of the provisions of controlling of the documents. So, uh, basically, um, I would just subject to our council. Um, being comfortable with the terms and conditions in the agreement. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, so I'll we'll offer a motion to accept the proposal dated April 29, 2015 by SFFI of New York, of, um, they're located in New York, New York, and subject to our council negotiating uh, which you feel, what they feel is comfortable and agreeable to them and I think we go with that, and we start moving this project forward, which will be a, a it'll be a, a, a multi-year project, and this is just the beginning phase of that project. Correct. Correct. So, Mr. Do uh, you want to make that motion? Anyway? Make that motion. Okay, and I'll and I, uh, that was uh, Engeladon makes that motion. Wait a second. Then the motion is to to allow the chairman to execute a contract, an agreement dated April 29th, subject to successful negotiation by our law firm. I'll second it. And that's uh, Jerry and Paul Tano. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 10.50 p.m. 10.50 a.m. Okay. So 11.50 a.m. 11. Yeah, sorry, I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Jerry. FSI Jerry. Okay. So, uh, Committee reports, we've done a lot of what we we didn't jump to committee reports right away, but we've jumped around and covered most, I think, what's on the committee reports. Um, 
I know we had a health and safety meeting this month. Jerry, if you want to make a quick comment on that and whatever else. Yeah, we had a very productive health and safety meeting this past month. Um, we identified a substantial amount of to-dos that um, I, as a commissioner, you know, really feel uh, the need to address. So without getting into a lot of details, we came to an agreement with the membership on um, things such as uh, what are some of the medical products that are being carried in the vehicles as well as some additional equipment that would need to be purchasing uh, in the coming months. So I don't want to get into too much details, but um, very progressive meeting. We got a lot done. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Um, anybody else on? I think you've had a lot of comments. Anybody else have any comments throughout the month? We also, um, the treasurer dropped off his treasury report. John Malzari supplied a complete treasurer's report, uh, as he normally does. He also gave us a list of bills to pay for this evening, for this afternoon. Uh, so, yeah, so we have the, the treasurer's report here. Um, it's also supplied an uh, email copy. I had a few things, but uh, are you continuing with other things? No, we're going to have to go. We're going to pay the bills in a okay. minute. Um, to pay the bills? I read through, I've already looked through the bills. Did everybody look through the bills? Yep. Hello. Okay. 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 Uh, generally, the town is required by law to release all the money they receive for the fire district when they receive it. The town has sent over 90% of the tax receipts, so I guess they receive 90% of the town-wide tax receipts by the date, um, by by this week, or April 30th, I guess. So we received 90% um, of the money. Um, we're, we're finding out, well, we're in communications to find out why it was 90 um, so that's done, and which is good. So we can pay our bills. And uh, let me go to the payment of bills. Is that okay? Ready, ready to pay yep. bills? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have one set of vouchers, and that's from May 13th, 2015, for a total of $195,184.92. So it's $195,184. One eighty four spot ninety two. The motion to pay these? Aye. Right. I'll make a motion to pay. So it'll be uh Chairman Napolitano and uh, second second, second with Mr. Lorry. All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Okay. So that's the payment of bills. And I had um, one other thing. We received a notice of claim from the town regarding the fire hydrants bills, the looking to have us pay the fire hydrant bill. And just a reminder, we have asked the controller's office to give us an opinion on that. We're waiting for the controller's office to come back for an opinion. Um, we received a letter from a law firm uh, located in White Plains, I guess retained by the town. Uh, we've taken that notice of claim, sent it to our legal counsel and they're um, representing the fire district on, on that notice of claim. So that's where that is. Um, and I've said the treasury report is here if anybody wants to read it. Mr. Lorry, did you have anything for us? Yeah, I just had a few things that I want to bring to the board's attention. Um, this house outside the back of the Waverly headquarters, number 27 New Street, the man's a gardener, and he seems to at the end of the evening after he finishes his work he dumps all his stuff in front of our fence back there and yesterday the town came with a payloader two men and a dump truck to pick it up and this is a continuous thing 
and Mr. Spadaro put Has a... Been seen to us? I saw him once, but that was before I was a commissioner. And um, Mr. Spadaro was out there with the men from the highway yesterday, and he put a sign up there, no dumping. But it's going to occur, and I think we should write a letter to the man to just ask him politely not to dump his debris. It's leaves, tree, branches. I guess instead of him paying the dump to go dump, he dumps it in front of there and thinking the town comes and pick it up. And yesterday they did come and pick it up. Oh, well, I'm sorry, gentlemen. And um, that's number one. Number two, I just want to bring it to everybody's attention that May, May 24th is the Memorial Day Parade in the town of... I'm sorry, May 26th is the Memorial Day Parade in the town of East Chester. It's at, um, it's at 10 o'clock, and it's starting at the town hall. And it goes, um, comes down from Mill Road and makes a left on Mill Road heading north to the monument. Uh, and also, May 26th is the memorial service at the Tuckahoe High School football field. Um, May 24th, um, I'm asked to bring this to the board from Mr. Vichy. Um, May 24th is the memorial service for the volunteers at 8.30 at the Assumption Church. And then they're having a memorial service at the Fireman's Monument at John Albanese uh, Street and Route 22. And the, um, the veterans are doing a, a firing squad there also after the priest does his memorial service. They're having breakfast and it, I was told to extend an invitation to the Board of Fire Commissioners at the Quarry Inn on um, Main Street in Tuckahoe. Uh, there was something else I had to say. Oh, and Mike, I do want you to um, extend an invitation to um, Local 916 uh, uh, Steve and his staff. For the Department of Memorial Service? For the Veterans Memorial Service and as well as you. Which, wait a second, which one? It's right on the corner of 22. The department? Yeah. The department of Memorial Service. Yeah. It's at the uh, corner of uh, 22 right. and uh, John Allen. to Assumption place. Church, but now you... Assumption Church is at 8.30. And then Sunday, after... Sunday morning? Yes, the 24th. After church services, then they're going to go up to the monument. They shouldn't be there but more than 15 minutes. Uh, church services should be out by 9.20, 9.30 at the latest. And that's all okay. I got to okay. for. Were they going to put something? Was, was there like a flyer notice that we could put up? I don't know if they're doing a flyer notice, but I was told to bring this to the attention of the board. Okay, so does anybody have board member comments? Anthony, maybe a good idea because Mr. Baker's not here. If you could just put those dates in a quick email and send them to Mr. Baker and the yeah, board. Yeah, sure. And just. Yeah, the, uh, uh, we're hoping to get there no later than 9 30 because. Um, the veterans are going to do a firing squad because they have to go to Playland and do a, a firing squad in Playland that day too. So well, hopefully that we, we, we are at the memorial uh, monument by 9.30. And the memorial service, maybe 10 minutes at the most, 15 minutes. That's it. Okay. Um, and there was something else I just thought of a second ago. I forgot. Um, all right. Oh. Next meeting, I can't make the second week in June. Mr. Baker can't make the second week in June. We may have stuff to do June. I can make June 4th, but I can't make June uh, whatever, so June 11th I can't make. So if, if June 4th can work as a date, that would be more preferable to do a June 4th meeting. So if you guys can check your calendars and get back, email, whatever. I can make it June 4th. June 4th. That's the first Thursday of the month? First Thursday instead of the... Because I, 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 know, I know Baker can't make it and I can't make it. Tentatively June 4th for me. I could say tentatively. Tentatively. <coughs> same thing with me on the 4th. I could let you know right after Memorial Day. Okay, that's fine. Already. I, I would say that uh, in the summer months, just because of scheduling conflicts, we may want to consider meetings that are morning. Yeah, potentially. Well, yes, what happened in the past, in the past, the board never met in July and August. Right. Not and usually August. not in July and August. I don't know, since we have so much going on, we're capable, but we will tailor. And everybody here is volunteers, 
and they're just trying to work their time into a schedule. So yeah, we'll try to do whatever works for people. In, the, in midday, mornings, whatever works is fine. There's no, you know, because what usually happens, something comes up and we have to take some action. Like the contractor may come back with this question and we have to approve it. And so we'll do a morning meeting and put it away. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, I agree. Work. The morning meeting, this worked pretty well for me today. This worked okay work for me this also. morning also. Yeah. Not a problem. On this one. So, um, all right. I looked, we're going to close the meeting in, the, in honor of those who um, fought and gave up their lives for the country and as we approach Memorial Day. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to close? Motion to close the meeting? A moment of silence first. Uh, okay. Okay.